Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Last week I showed you how to do a little skinny pouch with a diagonal zip on it. It was unlined and as I've had lots of requests for a lined version, that's what we're going to do today. Instead of it being a small pouch suitable for uh, a mobile phone, we are making it a fair bit bigger and that's the size that we have. This will actually fit an iPad, so I've got an iPad with its case inside here and this is actually slightly smaller than the other one so it fits in there beautifully. So today I'm going to show you how to do this as a line version. I'll be quilting the fabric as well and the other thing we'll be doing is using two different types of zips. Because this pouch or bag only takes one side of a zip we are going to be using a continuous zip for one of the bags and we're going to be using a regular dress zip for the other bag. But because we're only going to use half of the zip, we're going to use the remainder of the zip for a wristlet strap and the little tab on the side. And we'll make a strap for the other one. I'm also going to show you how to work out the sizing for these bags as well. Whether you want to make something big for your laptop, your tablet or a book even, uh, I'm going to show you how to create your own pattern or how to work out the sizing for it so that you can make this in any size that you like. You don't have to make it in the size that I provide for you. Come along and we'll do this together. We'll also just be using the one piece of fabric. So both of these bags are made from one outer piece and one lining piece. So there won't be any wastage today. Okay, before we cut up any of our fabric, I'm going to show you how to work out what size you need for the product that you want to make. So say I want to make this bag for my iPad. I'm going to keep the iPad cover on there. The first thing we're going to do is measure this and see how big it is. From one side to the other, this is seven and a half inches by 19 centimeters. And then we have about 10 inches, 25 centimeters. You also need to take into account the height of something because when we slip this into the bag, it won't sit in nicely if you don't make an allowance for that. So the height is about two centimetres or three quarters of an inch. But what I like to do is play with paper. I have a roll of brown paper that I like to use. It doesn't matter what you use, even interfacings are great to make patterns with or templates with. Just to show you um, what I'm doing here is I've got my product centred in the middle of my say fabric and on either side I've got three centimeters or one and a quarter inches and that will give me enough room to allow for the height of the bag and don't forget we're going to have a back and front of the fabric and also enough room at the base of the bag as well and this will also include my seam allowance so my seam allowance is going to be one centimeter or three eighths of an inch from here to the side. That's the allowance I've got for the height of the bag. And I'm gonna make sure that there's plenty of wiggle room in there as well. So once you've worked out how big you want your fabric to be around the outside of your product, for this particular project, we're going to double that. So I've got 10 inches or 25 centimeters across here. We also need to work out how much we need along the top. We'll do that in just a moment. So what I've done here is cut out some paper that is 20 inches or 50 centimetres. What that will do when I have my iPad inside the bag, the fabric will be folded over like this. There's plenty of room for my seam allowance and some wiggle room. But we still need to work out the diagonal of our pouch. And as far as the height is concerned, I've got that extra three centimeters top and bottom. So that was 12 inches or say 30 centimeters. And I've just doubled that. So we have 60 centimeters by 50 centimeters in the fabric that we're going to be using. And this will end up making two bags. Now I want to work out the angle of the zip that I want on my bag. The zip is going to start on this corner here. So when the fabric is folded over, the zip will start here and come down along here. Place 
my paper on the fold and then I'll start playing with different angles so from here to here obviously that's no good I want my zip to start in the corner you might fold that across like that and have a zip going from one corner to the next it's not what I want but I'll keep on going and playing around until I have the desired position of my zip so from here to here is where I'm going to end up having the zipper positioned and if I mark that line in just with a pen for the time being you'll see that this will be the front of the pouch and the zip will go from the corner down on the diagonal like this the angle can be anything you like so once you've decided on that we can work out exactly where we need to cut our fabric what we're going to need now is a piece of fabric for the main and the lining and some kind of stabilizer as well the fabric will be 50 centimeters wide or 19 and a half inches and from top to bottom it's 60 centimeters by 23 and three quarter inches and this is just based on my measurements you can do whichever measurements you like if you're working with inches just round it up or down so now that we have the sizing that we need for the fabric I've even got the line marked in already for the angle that I want I'd like to be able to make two bags from the one piece of fabric the measurement that I have for this diagonal line from the bottom corner at the moment is almost 16 centimeters or six and a quarter inches I'm going to make it easier for myself and round that so I'll do exactly 16 centimeters and again if you're working with inches make it exactly six and a half inches there's no hard and fast rule as to where the angle of the zip needs to start so from this end here I'm doing 16 centimeters or six and a half inches and from the other end I'll do exactly the same so at the opposite end I'll mark in that 16 centimeters or six and a half inches and these are now the points where our diagonal line are going to be marked so this now is divided into two equal pieces and we should be able to get two bags out of that what we can do now is cut across that line that we've just drawn and if we flip that over we should have two pieces that are equal size and that looks to be pretty good to me so this is our pattern now now you don't need to go to the trouble of making of doing this this is actually just showing you how to design your own bag based on the sizes that you need fold the fabric in half and then fold this down and this is going to be the pattern or the sizing that we need for the iPad that I have here so that was pretty simple so now that we've confirmed that that's going to fit we can cut this out on our fabric based on these measurements the other thing we need to do is find out how long a zipper we need so that will come to 24 inches or 61 centimeters so based on this that's the minimum length I need for my zipper I'm going to show you how to do this project with two different types of zips so this one here is a number five continuous zip and you'll just pull it apart and use one side for each of the bags and this one here is a regular dress zip which I think is equivalent to a number three so these ones are a little bit more difficult to work with when we put the slide on but it's certainly doable when I did the unlined version the other day if you were asked if we can actually use regular dress zips the answer is yes you've just got to hold your tongue right so what we've got here is either a continuous zip in which case you'll need two sliders and if you don't have access to continuous zips then to make two of these you're actually going to need two zips because half of this will be wasted but we will actually use the other side I've got a piece of fabric cut bigger than what we need for the main also for the lining I've done the same I've cut 
a piece a little bit bigger as well because we're going to square it up later and then what I've done is cut a piece of fusible fleece and it's really nice and fine with the fusible on one side the weight of it is probably equivalent to a lightweight palan or a palan so the fusible fleece that I'm using is Matilda's own I'll pop a link to my website for this if you can't find it locally in Australia so what I'm going to do now is fuse this stabilizer onto the main fabric and as I said it's bigger than we need but the reason for that is because we're going to be quilting this and once we've quilted then we'll trim everything back to size quilting has a tendency to distort some of the fabric or the stabilizer and rather than cutting everything to the exact size that we need and then having to trim it back we'll make it a little bit bigger and trim it back later so I'll go and fuse that together and iron my lining the fusible fleece has been ironed onto the back of my main fabric I'm going to take this to the machine now and quilt it you can quilt this any way you like whether you want to use cross hatching by doing diagonal lines going across in both directions or just free motion quilting whatever it is you like I'm just going to draw a bunch of diagonal lines on the wrong side so I'll quickly go and do that now then I'll be back to show you the finished quilting we can square this up and then get on to the task of making these bags I have quilted the lines on my fabric I've cut everything to the size that I need including the lining and I've also cut some fabric for a wristlet strap and the tab on the side of the bag I've just used the excess fabric that was cut off when I trimmed this back and that's nine centimeters wide or three and a half inches by about 22 to 24 inches in length and which will be enough for the tab and the wristlet strap you'll notice that there's still some fusible fleece on this this was just the leftover piece of fabric when I trimmed it back so rather than throwing this out uh, I've just made use of it and it'll just give a little bit of extra stability to the wristlet you don't need to put anything at all but this will be perfectly usable exactly as is and then what I'll do is so two straight lines right down the very outer edge of the strip of fabric the quilting is completely optional you don't have to do that at all providing you have a stabilizer that will fuse to your fabric if it's going to come apart then I would recommend quilting the lines all I've done is 45 degree lines they were two inches apart and I've just done them on one angle with everything ready we can get started so we've got the longest point of the fabric here which is 24 inches I'm just going to turn this over so that you can see some of the white on this side if I show you all of the wrong side it's going to cause a lot of strobing on the camera so I'm just going to show you the little bit of white peeking out it'll make it easier for you to see what I'm doing with this being the longest part of our fabric I'm going to measure 16 centimeters or six and a half inches from the bottom edge of my fabric and I make a mark there on the other side I want to do the same so now we've got this line and this line and we're going to cut diagonally straight across I'm going to pop a pin in here because I'll turn it around to prevent that flickering I've got a line marked here and here I need to cut the fabric in two pieces now and you can do that by drawing a line right across the center and cutting straight across or you can just cut that straight away with your rotary cutter and ruler you'll notice that my line is going this way rather than this way by having the line start at the bottom left and going up to the right when I make this bag the zip will go from the bottom up to the top coming from left to right so if you want your diagonal line from right to left mark your line from right to left otherwise do it from left to right it makes no difference for me I'm just going to stick with the line that I've already got I've placed the outer fabric over the top of the lining fabric and then I can cut everything out all at once so just make sure that's nice and even all the way around before you cut 
otherwise you have to do two separate measurements. Okay, now we have two equal pieces which will make two bags. I'll set one of those aside. The first zip we're going to work with is the continuous zip. I'll show you in a minute how we work with the number three dress zip. Separate the pieces and the spirals of the zip need to be faced down toward you and you've got the flat edge of the zipper tape on the raw edge of your fabric. Space that evenly so that you've got some tape extended on either side and you can pin that in place and grab your lining and place that directly over the top lining up the edges on the side and then lining up the top edge of the zip and you can go and pin that across all the way or if you've got double-sided tape use that which is what I will do. So that one is secured in place with the lining and the main. We'll take this to the machine and we're going to sew all the way down that edge using your zipper foot and then we'll open that out and we'll top stitch. That's for the number five continuous zip. To use a regular dress zip we're going to still have to split them. I've cut off the end of the zip and separated the tape and I have one slider. We're going to use that as our wristlet and our tab and we'll keep the slide out of the way for the time being. And you'll also notice that my zip isn't quite long enough. I didn't have a regular 24 inch zip. So I'll just trim this bag back. You'll apply the zip to the fabric exactly the same way as we did with the continuous. You'll run that along the edge of your fabric, leaving an overhang and place your lining fabric over the top and pin or clip it in place all the way down from one end to the other. At the moment, the technique for putting the zips in is exactly the same. It's not until you put the zip slide on that it'll be slightly different. Something to keep in mind uh, when you're working with fabric that's been cut on the diagonal, which is your bias, it's going to be extremely stretchy along here. So you don't want to be handling this too much and you certainly don't want to be pulling or manipulating it. The other side's not so bad because we've got stabilizer fused to it and we've also quilted it. So just be careful with your lining fabric that you don't stretch that out of shape. Let's go and sew both of those zippers in place. Okay, the first one I'm doing is the one with the dress zip. Just back stitch at the beginning and the end. So once that's been inserted, then I want to separate the fabric. Just press that down. You can take it to the iron and press it and bring the lining fabric to the back of the main. Line up the straight edge of your fabric and your main on the outside edge there. And then we can top stitch from one end to the other. And just make sure that your lining is sitting underneath your main fabric. And the other one with the bigger zip on is done exactly the same way. Now when you are sewing your pieces together with the lining and your main fabric, the lining fabric is always best underneath rather than on top because the lining fabric is usually the lighter weight fabric. It'll shift less if you have that at the bottom. And again, I'll separate the fabric, press it and put the lining behind the main to top stitch. Okay. 
Okay, zips inserted, the top stitching's done, and that's all looking pretty good. Now we're going to put the sliders on. So this one here is the one with the dress zip. I'll set that aside for the moment because it's more difficult. <laughs> and I'd like to start with something a little bit easier. I've got my number five zip slider and I'm ready to put that onto my zip now. I've made these to sell in the shop. I'm going to see how they go as lined versions and unlined versions. So if you want to sell them and you want to put a label on, what I've done to determine the positioning is folded that in half, taken into account my seam allowance, and then placed the label in the centre there. When you do that, you want to open out your fabric so you don't stitch it to your lining. Okay, what we need to do, before we put the slide on, line up the straight edge on either side of your zip and just make sure that that's nice and straight going across. If it isn't straight, if you've got one edge longer than the other, just trim it back until you've got your zipper teeth in the same position. It'll make it easier for you to line it up. Take the curved edge of your slide with the dangly bit faced up. Sit that just on the very top. You don't need to push it. And then just sit the other one beside it. Make sure the tape is even at the top there. I'm holding the teeth in place just in the center there and I'll give it a push and there was a little click and then I know that that's ready to start sliding. Just hold that in place and the zip is ready. So if we have a look at the bag now, You've got a nice straight edge of your fabric. The zipper end is straight as well, which doesn't matter now because we're going to cut it off shortly, but that's how our bag is going to look. At this point, you want to open up your zip at least part of the way. Just be careful not to separate the teeth here, otherwise you'll have to redo that step again. So leave this open and I'll show you how to do the number three zip. The technique is exactly the same. I'll line up the straight edge of the fabric. I still have the metal tab on the end of the zip, so I need to cut that off and make sure that the tape is nice and straight. So I've got my straight edge of my fabric and the zipper is straight along the end. Now we'll take this tiny little slider, the number three or the dress zip, and you've got to make sure you hold your tongue the right way I don't use them often because they're such a pain to uh, try and get on. Sit that over the edge exactly the same way as I did with the larger one. Pop that the other side in. Hold the teeth together in the center and give it a push. And then give it another push. <laughs> as I said, you've just got to hope that it goes on. It's much more difficult. If it doesn't work like that, you can use zipper jiggers, and I have done a video of that before. But the other thing that you can do is place the zip onto the flat surface of your table. And hold that in place there too. Then just put your fingertip on the uh, wiggly bit. Hold the top of the zipper tape and push and you might have to try that a few times. Okay, so that's worked. It took a little bit of pushing, but that did manage to go on. And I've even got it straight along here. Because these are a little bit more difficult to work with, if that wasn't straight, I would actually cheat and straighten the fabric up when I sewed it together. For me, they're a pain. That's why I don't use the dress zips very often when I'm sewing to sell. It's all about saving time for me. So that one will zip up nicely. And again, we'll leave that one open at least part of the way so that we can turn the bag around the right way later. What we do have to do before we can finish closing up the bag is the handle. With the handle fabric folded in twice, I'm going to take that to the machine and sew 
down both long edges and I'll quickly go and do that now you've seen me do that in many videos before so that's been sewn down both long edges and we have a little strap long enough for a wrist and I've cut off a piece from the end of it which is about two and a half inches or seven centimeters long now we're going to use this strap for the bag that's got the number five zip with the one that's got the dress zip we've still got one side of the zip to use so what I'm going to do is cut off about two and a half to three inches with a longer piece of tape I'll feed my small swivel over the top of it this one's only about a 12 mil or half inch what I've done here is trimmed off a small section of the spiral teeth place that together so in this case I have the spirals of the teeth facing each other I'm going to sew those two layers in place just where the spirals meet so I'll backstitch that a couple of times whilst I'm at it I'm going to trim one side only I'll take this to the machine and sew straight over there I'll go and do that now and show you what we're doing at the machine so before I start sewing I'm going to put the needle down I'll backstitch and I'm going to do this in white thread so you can see what I'm doing take the longer side and fold that over to that line that you've just stitched you might need to clip that so you can see then we'll open that out and that folded edge will go over to the edge of the tape and we can sew this in place on both sides that will neaten up the raw edge on the side there it'll give you a nice neat closure again I'm going to put my needle down just to prevent that from shifting I'll do a back stitch and just do a few stitches back and forth turn around and I'm going to sew down the edge of the fold turn around again come beside the edge of the zipper teeth then that's all closed up and I would just neaten off all those fluffy bits of mess that I've made obviously I'm not going to leave this with white thread so I'll just trim this back and redo it using the gray thread so that's how simple it is just to close up the edges of your zip and then once you've done that bring the stitching that you've just done down to the bottom edge where your swivel clip is and then sew that in place across there that'll keep the slide in place and you'll have the rest of your strap looking nice and neat so I'll go and cut this off and use some grey thread now with the other bag we will take our larger swivel clip and a d-ring so I'm using two and a half centimeter or one inch wide d-rings I'll pop the swivel clip onto my handle and I will stitch that closed along the edge there with this tab just place our d-ring over the top the positioning for the tab if you take the bottom edge of your fabric line that up along the bottom there and we'll place that tab about one and a half centimeters or about half an inch just near the top of the folded edge of the fabric now we're only going to place that tab on the main fabric not on your lining so just separate your lining and we'll place that over here and you'll do exactly the same with the one that's got the zip slider on it just position that near the top edge there now we can separate the fabric remember your zips open bring your lining away from the main take the bottom edge of your fabric line those up and then start lining up the side edge just move the lining out of the way and when you get to this top section here flip it over keep the lining out of the way you've got your tab clipped in place here and you can clip those layers together with that tab on the inside there and the main fabric is ready to be sewn in place so we'll sew along the edge here leave this area where the zip is continue on and across the bottom when you're doing the lining we're going to do exactly the same thing but we're going to sew both layers separately so line up 
the bottom edge of your lining we're going to leave an opening at the bottom for turning through let's so just move that fabric out of the way and line it up at the bottom now you can leave your opening at the bottom or you can leave it at the side but there's not as much room at the side here so the bottom will be easier so we'll sew across the bottom back stitch we'll back stitch here and continue on around until you get to the zipper tape back stitch there and you'll do the same thing from here on up back stitch at the tape and finish at the end and once you've sewn the lining and the main fabric pieces separately you'll have this small section here to close up so you'll go from the stitching line that you've finished at to the stitching line you finished at here and we'll just sew over this I usually like to reinforce that a couple of times but we'll sew all of those layers and the zip together all in one go here but everything else is left separate for the other one we will do exactly the same thing and I don't have a d-ring for the tab so I'm going to put the tab on by itself it won't matter because when this one is connected it's just going to connect straight at the very top I like to just put a little bit of double-sided tape at the end there just to hold the edges together because it does shift when you're sewing and insert that just near the top of the fold on the outer fabric okay let's go to the machine and we'll sew both of those separately I'll start with the main fabric first and this is the bottom section so I'll do I'll go forward and then back When I come to the corner I'm going to go back two stitches and forward again and then I'll turn my work around and do the same forward and back. It just reinforces the corner. And I'll sew the outer fabric up to the side edge of the zipper tape, back stitch. I'll flip it over move the lining out of the way and then I'll start from the top section I've got that little tab in there as well I like to reinforce anywhere that there's a lot of bulk and I'll sew up to the edge of that zipper tape and we'll do the same for the lining remembering of course to keep the opening at the bottom stitch and I'll leave an opening of about four fingers width back stitch at the beginning and when I get to the corner I'll do the same thing and I'll do a couple of stitches back and then forward again and I'll sew as close as I can to the edge of the tape there without sewing over the main fabric and back stitch and I'll do the same on this side start as close to the zipper tape as you can it really doesn't matter if it's a little bit further out because you'll end up stitching that closed anyway now that we have our side seam sewn together separately all we have to do is close up this section where the zip is where my stitching has ended and begun here we're just going to sew over that making sure that you actually sew over the same stitching on the other side if you overlap it a little bit it won't matter at all and again I like to reinforce my zips okay now that the bag is all finished we just need to trim the corners And the zip and we can turn this the right way around so just pop your hand in the lining there open the zip the rest of the way and reach into the main and pull that all through once you've got your corners sticking out nicely we can take the lining back to the machine and close that up again all we need is a back stitch at the beginning and the end and so very close to the edge pop 
the lining inside and there's the main part of our bag finished so this is the one with your regular number three zip and I've used the excess zipper tape for a tab and then we can add the wristlet with a swivel clip so that one's completely finished the other one needs a larger handle which we've got here so what I've done is placed the larger clip onto the handle and then I've sewn it closed the back strap overhanging by about three quarters of an inch or two centimeters and the front section is about half a centimeter or quarter of an inch so I have a fair overlap here so what I'll do now spread the strap apart and that will be folded across but to neaten up the raw edge I'm just going to fold that underneath So with that raw edge folded underneath, I'll sew a box around here and then I'm going to move my swivel close to that edge and then sew that closed. We'll go to the machine and do the rest. So once that has been sewn closed, what I'll do now is move my slider over to where the seam connects, fold that over and I'll sew that in place. And that's completely finished now and we have a completed bag. This is the one that's got the bigger zip, the number five. And I've had to cut this one down a little bit because my zip wasn't long enough. So the height of the bag is a little bit longer and it's also a little bit narrower as well because I've had to trim off that excess fabric. But we have the iPad sitting inside here beautifully so this is the one that we've taken our measurements from there's plenty of wiggle room on the inside and even though i've cut this one down the ipad will still fit in here as well it's just a little bit slimmer so there we go Normally you would have two identical bags because you would use the same zip on each side but in this case we've just made a minor adjustment with the different zipper types, a self-made handle with one of them and instead of wasting one side of your zip you can use that to make yourself a handy little wristlet strap. So what did you think of that? You've got two different kinds of zips, the number three dress zip and rather than throwing out the leftover piece, we've managed to repurpose that for the wristlet strap and the tab. And then you have a nice sturdy one over here with some a little bit of excess fabric. So I think these have come up pretty well. They're only lightly quilted with some diagonal lines going across. I'm pretty happy with how these have turned out. They only take a little bit longer than the ones I showed you last week that were unlined. You can whip through those ones very quickly, but it doesn't take that much extra effort to go and line them. Personally, I like most of my products fully lined and I'm not into bindings or French seams. It does add a lot of extra bulk, so I would much rather have everything fully lined. I'm going to try both sorts out in the shop so the ones that I did last week that are unlined I think I've put ten dollars on those and they're only small pouches whereas these ones here I think they're a lot more versatile as book bags tablet bags so I'll probably put about 25 to 30 dollars on these one of the reasons for that is that I'm using a stabilizer in here so that's a little bit of extra cost to my products whereas I usually get the fabric in deceased estates or job or people just dropping that off because they don't want it so I don't charge for anything I get for free um, so the hardware that I've got here the zip and the stabilizer that I use all of that needs to be factored in so I'm going to try them out at 25 to 30 dollars. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.